So lovely people, welcome to my highlighter collection and declutter. It is as simple as that. I'm just going to go through all of my highlighters either in a palette form or in a single form and we're just going to see what can stay and what can go. I'm gonna be honest with you because highlighter is one of my favorite makeup products to apply and one of the steps in my makeup routine that I would hardly ever skip. I think not a lot of these are going to go. Some of these might even stay just purely for sentimental value. But we're just going to go through it. Uh, I'm going to show you what I have and we might as well declutter a few while we are at it. But like I said, no promises made. I don't think much will be decluttered. But without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So I'm going to start off with all of my highlighter palettes over here. And I think I'm going to first address the elephant in the room, which is the Kat Von D Alchemist palette over here, which I am not going to declutter. And if you are wondering why, the reason is actually very simple. I received this as a gift from Amber a few years ago because we couldn't really get Kat Von D products around here and she was so incredibly sweet to send this my way as a present and I will forever cherish it. My friendship with Amber certainly means more to me than my feelings for Kat Von D which is why I will save this highlighter palette. Next up we have one of my few MAC highlighters. This is actually not a highlighter only. It is the um, copper face palette from the Nutcracker Suite. It was a holiday collection from a couple of years ago. It came in these beautiful little duos where you basically got one of the extra dimension blushes and one of the extra dimension skin finishes. This is one of my favorite formulas from MAC ever. I do adore the blush, I use it a lot and I also do use this highlighter quite a bit. It is one of the few like more golden highlighters in my collection that I really enjoy. This very much reminds me of the formula of the new Nabla Skin Glazing highlighters and because this is so similar to the MAC highlighters I chose not to purchase the gold one because I already have this one in my collection. This is definitely not going anywhere either, it is staying right where it is. Next I have this little quad here, this is the... I don't know how it's called honestly it is the little quads that you get from Cleona Cosmetics with their highlighters which you can sort of create yourself I think I think I chose all the four shades that are in here and just to throw it in very quickly because it is a really important detail these are handmade so the whole outside packaging is handmade handcrafted hand painted it is absolutely beautiful I love it Needless to say, I'm not going to get rid of these because I really, really love the formula as well. These are all duochrome highlighters. My favorite in here is definitely the shade Fuse and the shade Electrocute because they have this like sort of like gold, copper, pink shift to them. One leans a bit more gold, the other one leans a bit more copper pink. I love both of these. And this palette is definitely not going anywhere. I love this. Next, let's talk about this little throwback item over here. This is the Makeup Geek X Catalin Lights uh, Highlighter Trio from very many years ago now. This contains three highlighter shades with... Um, a pink, a gold and a bronze. I've seen a lot of people declutter this palette. I'm not going to declutter mine because I actually quite enjoy the formula of Makeup Geek's highlighters. I do think it's one of those really smooth, really reflective formulas. Even if um, at least one of these shades is, I think, too dark for me. This pink over here is definitely one of my favorites from this palette. It's this really gorgeous, light, cool-toned pink. I do like the gold, but I really, really love the copper. I think the copper is the one that's a little bit dark for me. But what I tend to do with it is mix it in a little bit with the gold shade, and then I can kind of always make the copper work for me. So I do apply these two always together, and this one on occasion by itself. So even though I don't reach for this a whole lot, I do actually still reach for it sometimes. So I'm going to keep it, because it's such a throwback, and I actually do love the formula. This is from NARS, from the holiday collection that they released last year. This is one of the fairy... Fairy. This is one of the very few items that I own from NARS. When I saw the packaging on this, I was so completely mesmerized that I thought I need to have it. And I was also very curious about the highlighter formula of NARS. This contains three shades and one of them is quite popular. I think this is the shade that is quite popular. This is the shade for the France. Now, generally speaking, I think this is a really beautiful, really smooth formula. It's definitely a formula that's going to work for a lot of different skin types. It is really smooth, it never accentuates texture, but with that being said, it is also a more subtle formula. And 
I do like this palette, but it is not one of my favorite items to reach for in my collection. I'm not going to get rid of it just because it's so beautiful to look at and I do use it from time to time when the occasion calls for a more subtle highlighter. And I don't really know what I was expecting with NARS. Of course, they were not going to do something crazy like Anastasia Beverly Hills. So I'm not even sure why I was a little bit disappointed in the formula of these highlighters. I think I should just stop expecting that NARS is going to be something that they're not. This is gonna stay. Next up we have this little self-made highlighter palette that I have with my Divina and Luxie highlighters. These four are Divina, these two over here are Luxie highlighters. I am not going to swatch all of them for you, but maybe I'm going to swatch my favorites. So these are the shades Zion and this is the shade... Crap, how is this called again? These are the shades Zion and Euphoria. Zion and Euphoria from Divina are absolutely beautiful. They're the types of highlighters that I really, really love to wear. If you haven't already guessed it, highlighters like this with like a gold copper pink sheen are my favorite things to wear. This one leans almost a little bit orange gold and I absolutely love it on the skin. And then we have the two highlighters here that I have from Luxy. You can see even in the pan that the Luxy highlighters have a little bit chunkier formulas to them, but they're still absolutely beautiful on the skin. This one is in the shade High Society, and this one is in the shade Goddess. And I do love both of them. High Society has those beautiful, like, gold pink tones to it, and Goddess is an absolutely beautiful like, bronzy, orange gold type of highlighter. I love both of these so much. You can see the formula is also really, really smooth, even though it looks a little bit chunky in the pan. Yes, I know that all of these look very similar to each other, but like I said, because these are the types of shades that I like to wear, I do wear them quite often, and I don't know where you can tell, but all of these are quite beat up. The last four palettes I have over here are all from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Let's start with Aurora, because Aurora is definitely not going anywhere. Aurora is my favorite glow kit from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I don't necessarily love and use all the shades in it. I'm not only keeping this highlighter palette, but I'm also considering repurchasing it in case I pan these two shades. These are the shades Eclipse and Lyra. I feel like I'm going to start repeating myself, but I think the swatches can already tell you why these are my favorite shades in this palette. They're stunning, they're gorgeous. This one in particular, Eclipse, looks so incredibly flattering on my skin. I love it. I think... This is my favorite highlighter, like this shade here is my favorite highlighter in my whole collection. And if I ever pant these two shades, especially the shade Eclipse, I would probably go and repurchase the whole thing just for this one shade. I know it's stupid and juvenile, but I've never come across a good dupe for Eclipse. Nothing ever quite comes close to it, so if I ever pant it, I'll just have to go and repurchase the whole thing. Anyway, moving on. This is the first glow kit that I ever bought from Anastasia. No, I'm lying. That's not the first glow kit I bought from Anastasia. This is the first glow kit I bought from Anastasia. This is Sweets. And it contains, well, four shades. One of them is missing for me, and I'll explain myself in a little bit. But... These two in particular, Butterscotch and Taffy, are absolute favorites of mine. I love, love, love them so very much. Absolutely gorgeous. Especially the shade Taffy. is this gorgeous, like, rose gold type of shade, and I don't think I have many like this one in my collection. It is a bit dark on my skin, but I can make it work, and especially in the summer, it looks absolutely beautiful on the skin. So I also do love Butterscotch quite a bit. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, the shade Sassy Grape, I don't really use very often. I haven't used it in ages. Let me swatch this again. Yeah, this is just... Not the kind of highlighter that I reach for very often, to be quite honest with you. And as you can see, the shade Marshmallow is actually missing because I don't like the shade Marshmallow. I'm gonna show you Marshmallow in a second because it's in my other glow kit. Um, Marshmallow is like a very yellow gold and I gave mine away to a friend. But now I'm thinking if I can maybe combine these two into just one glow kit because I don't really use Sassy Grape much and I'm pretty sure that I are... I can rearrange these two a little bit. So let me let me put this one just like this on the side. The Sugar Glow Kit was released the same year, I believe, the Prism Palette was released. And this is not new shades of highlighter. These were all, I believe, like the most cult favorite Anastasia Glow Kit shades, all combined in one kit. Um, there's another marshmallow in here, which looks like shit, by the way, because there's, like, dust from... <sighs> Ugh. There's dust from all these other highlighter shades um, covering it up. But there's another marshmallow here, so let me quickly show you. This just looks really, really, really yellow on my skin. And not in a flattering way. It doesn't look great on my skin, so I'm actually thinking of 
rearranging things a little bit because as you can also see there's another butterscotch in here it actually feels like the texture of this is slightly different than the butterscotch in my other palette because this one feels a little bit smoother and almost like a slightly different color call me crazy but I feel like the two are not exactly the same shade with that being said I do love the butterscotch that is in the Swiss glow kit so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this butterscotch and I'm going to remove Marshmallow. Just so it's clear, I'm not getting rid of Gumdrop and Starburst because Gumdrop especially is one of my favorite highlighters in my collection. I really, really love this highlighter. It's such an interesting duochrome. So there you have Gumdrop and here you have Starburst. Starburst is a very, very light pink. I don't like wearing Starburst on its own, but I do like pairing with pairing it with gumdrop on occasion because gumdrop is a little bit dark and sometimes when I feel like I want to lighten it up I do apply it together with starburst so what I think I'm going to do now is I'm just going to transfer my better butterscotch into here and I'm also going to transfer taffy over here and ta-da! I think I can basically call it a day now because I'm gonna put butterscotch in here I'm gonna put marshmallow in here the only one that's missing now is the taffy shade and I'm going to see whether I can give this whole thing away to someone because I actually don't think I'm gonna use any of these shades so yay we have decluttered a whole glow kit and the last glow kit from Anastasia that I have that is going absolutely nowhere is Dream I love Dream you can see just from how dirty it is let me actually clean it up. Oh god, sparkle dust everywhere. You could see from how dirty my palette was that I have used this palette a lot. I love every single shade in here and I'm not getting rid of this ever because I absolutely love it. Let's start with the loose bunch over here. So these two are sort of like cream highlighters, they were called the Lumos Glimmering Shimmering Pearls from Darling Girl Cosmetics those are cream highlighters, they're sort of like duochromes, this has a little bit of like a green, like golden green tinge to it and this one is, I, I don't think actually this one is the duochrome, this one is like a light pink I'm going to declutter both of these because I've kept keeping them over and over after every declutter thinking that I'm going to reach for them because they're my only cream highlighters but I never do, I just never do so I think I'm going to finally get rid of them because they're also cream products, they're getting quite old and I just, I am ne never going to reach for them so I don't know why I'm kidding myself and keeping them every single time maybe a little bit because of nostalgia speaking of uh, nostalgia and being a sap and a sentimental person this is the Mary Lou Luminizer from The Balm which I received as a present many years ago from one of my best friends and this is like the most basic bitch beige golden highlighter you can ever imagine it is a very smooth formula I don't know whether a lot of you will remember this but this highlighter was all the rage because Nikki Tutorials made it sound like it's the best thing created after french fries so I I think I'm going to keep this for now here's another highlighter that was wildly popularized by big youtubers in the beauty community this is the Essence Pure Nude highlighter this one is in the shade Be My Highlight Kathleen Lights couldn't shut up about this highlighter and it's like this baked very smooth formula again a very like basic beach highlighter it's definitely even less like it's even more subtle that, than the one from the balm but I am going to keep this highlighter around because I do use it as my cupid's bow highlight I don't really like to highlight my cupid's bow with like very chunky very glittery highlighters because I always end up with glitter mustache but this one is very subtle and it is exactly the type of highlighter that I would use on other parts of my face than my cheekbones here we got another classic this is the MAC highlighter in the shade soft and gentle I believe there's no living person on beauty YouTube who doesn't know about soft and gentle because it is one of those cult classics that I don't know I think everyone has in their collection this is a beautiful baked formula, it is a super basic color, it's basically like a beige champagne sort of shade. I am actually going to keep this highlighter around because I do like the formula and when I want something really really neutral in terms of a color, I will occasionally reach for soft and gentle.
Okay, let's take a look at my um, only two highlighters that I have left from Notoriously Morbid. This is the shade I Burn, I Pine, I Perish, which, if you understood the reference, points. This is gorgeous, I'm not getting rid of this, I love the formula, I love the shift on this highlighter, it's a duochrome highlighter, it has this beautiful like beige gold undertone with a very strong pink shift to it and I absolutely love it, this is not going anywhere and it's in a pressed form which is a huge bonus in the in the makeup world. I have actually saved one of these highlighters from Notoriously Morbid also in a loose form and now I'm wondering why because I didn't really keep any of my loose highlighters, so I'm wondering what made this one so special that I kept it. So let me give it a little bit of a swatch to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think the reason I kept it is because it has a little bit of those coppery pink undertones to it, but with that being said, I'm never going to reach for it over any of those other copper pink duochrome highlighters that I have in my collection, so I have no idea what I was thinking when I saved this. This is going to be decluttered. Let's quickly talk about this guy. This is a highlighter from Kiko Milano from their Into the Dark collection. This was their 20th anniversary collection, I think, I want to say two years ago. The packaging on this is absolutely beautiful, stunning. The highlighter itself is absolutely gorgeous. It's like this um, sort of like pie highlighter where you have like the different triangles that have a different shade so you can swirl them all, all around or you can use them individually. Definitely keeping this for two reasons. First of all, I actually do love mixing these two shades together and using them as a highlighter because as you can see they make a subtle like sort of orange tone like sort of like a peachy orange pastel which I absolutely love I don't really use this one because it's just too dark for me but I do love mixing these two and the second reason I'm going to keep this is because this was also a present from a good friend what I do think I'm going to finally declutter though is the actual box in which the highlighter came because I was still going through a phase where I couldn't get rid of the actual like outside packaging of a lot of products that I have and in the past few months I've gotten really good at it so at least I'm going to get rid of this I'm going to definitely keep the highlighter but I'm going to toss the outer packaging. Let's talk about these four. None of them is going anywhere because I love all of them. This is the original Fenty Beauty Diamond Bomb Highlighter. This is the one that came out summer of last year. This is the beautiful, like, squishy, jelly, creamy type of formula. I love the formula of this highlighter. I absolutely adore the effect it gives on the skin. It gives this super gorgeous, almost wet, glass skin-like and I just love it so much. This is one of the most unique highlighters I have in my collection in terms of its formula. Let's talk about my newest highlighters. These are the Nabla Skin Glazing Powders. These are not going anywhere because I absolutely adore them. Okay, let me hold them awkwardly for you so that you can see them. This is the shade Privilege. This is the shade Ozone. I love both of these. Privilege has those beautiful like peachy pink tones to it and Ozone is like a very light beige with slight pink tones to it. Let me swatch them for you. They are absolutely stunning. The formula on these is stellar. They look beautiful on the skin. I just love these skin blazing powders so much. And let's talk about this little cutie pie over here. This is the Too Faced... What's this called again? Highlighter stick in the shade Pink Lemonade. First of all, the packaging on this is so freaking adorable. Too Faced always gets me with their packaging. I don't know what it is about them. I normally don't fall for childish, like, juvenile packaging, but Too Faced somehow, like, strikes that golden middle where it's just not juvenile enough to turn me off, but it's still a bit tacky and I like it in a wrong way. I don't know. I, I just like this, okay? This is one of my newest highlighters in my collection. I bought this um, this past summer and it is a stick highlighter. I absolutely love it. It is kind of a glitter bomb but it has again those beautiful copper pinky tones to it. I'm not sure whether you can see it because it blends into my skin tone quite well. Um, let me see whether maybe I can swatch it here in the palm of my hand which seems to be a thing on YouTube now. Swatching things on the palm of your hand. You can see Gorgeous color. It is a little bit dark for me maybe right now, but in the summer it looks great. And it is sort of a glitter bomb, which I like. I don't mind glitter bomb highlighters. So far I haven't done really well with the decluttering because I uh, basically only got rid of packaging in that last batch of highlighters. But let's see if something else is gonna go over here. Let's start in order from here onwards. So this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills 
Riviera Illuminator. I don't know if you guys remember these. These were the first release of Anastasia in terms of highlighters and they were in this beautiful baked gelée type of formula. This is the shade Riviera. I actually wanted a different shade. I wanted like this more golden -y type of shade that was called I think So Hollywood. But I couldn't really get my hands on it back then. Because back then, and by back then I mean like circa 2015, 2016, Anastasia was incredibly difficult to get in Europe. So I think the Anastasia products or like a select items were available on Beauty Bay and Riviera was in stock. So then I asked my husband to get it for me as a present. Because he always asks me what to get for me makeup wise and because he doesn't know I just tell him. So I'm going to keep this highlighter because it is quite a unique shade. It's a very cool toned pink champagne kind of highlighter. It's actually very similar to their pink champagne shade. I'm gonna keep this because I do use it on occasion. I love the formula and like I said I'm a sentimental sap and this was a present from my husband so it's not going anywhere. Okay, these two on the other hand. These are the Makeup Academy Undress Your Skin Shimmer Highlighters. One of them is in the shade Pink Shimmer, the other one is in the shade Opalescent Amber. Now, when these highlighters first came into my life, I was obsessed with them, especially the shade Opalescent Amber was one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. So I absolutely loved this highlighter, I loved it. And I think the formula is so nice, it sits so nicely on the skin, so I absolutely loved Opalescent Amber. Pink Shimmer is also gorgeous, it's much less of a unique shade, it's like a, just your regular white pink duochrome highlighter, but once again it has a very smooth formula to it. Now, I do have quite a lot of like pinkish leaning highlighters and I do have a lot of these types of orangey type of highlighters, so I think the time has come for me to say goodbye to the Makeup Academy highlighters, even though I absolutely adore them. The next one we have here is another real throwback. This is Champagne Pop from Becca. This is, I believe, at this point my only Becca highlighter that I have kept. I think I had the shade Opal, both in a cream and in a highlighter, like a small uh, pressed highlighter, but I gave both of them away because I didn't really think they were anything special. Now I'm going to keep Champagne Pop because I do like the color and it is such a throwback and it also is again a sentimental thing for me. I bought this on Robson Street in Vancouver when I was visiting Canada in 2016 and it kind of reminds me of that trip. I don't care one bit for Jaclyn Hill especially after she started chilling Morphe so much but I do actually like this highlighter so I am going to keep it. Next up we have this Kiko highlighter that was from a limited edition collection for the holidays a couple of years ago. This is the shade Iridescent Rose. I love this highlighter. Now, what happened to this highlighter, clearly something happened to it, let me explain, is it used to have these like pink stripes over here and these pink stripes were always in the way because what I actually like is this here which surrounded the pink stripes which has the most beautiful golden pink hue to it. It looks beautiful on my skin and I just I love it, okay? I love it, but these pink stripes were always in the way for me. So what I decided to do is I just removed them surgically. It was painless, the highlighter didn't suffer. I think it's good. I think I'm going to actually enjoy using this highlighter more now, even though it looks like crap. I don't like mutilating makeup. I'm someone who really, really dislikes uh, the process of, you know, depotting and, you know, mixing things or breaking them and stuff like that. I just think it's so disrespectful to makeup. For some reason, I really dislike it, but I did think this was necessary because I kept like tiptoeing around those pink stripes for the longest time and it made me just reach into this highlighter less and I want to reach for it more because I actually really love it. Here we have my other Makeup Geek highlighters. These are in a single form. This is the shade Psychedelic and Luster. Let me show them to you. The shade Psychedelic is not going anywhere because Psychedelic is one of my favorite highlighters of all time. Um, if you didn't guess it already, it's because it has this gorgeous copper duochrome to it. This is one of the most beautiful highlighters that I own. So Psychedelic ain't going anywhere. I love Psychedelic so, 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 so much. We have the shade Luster, which isn't necessarily like a very special shade. Actually, it looks very similar to the pink shade in the... Kathleen Lights palette, but this one is just a tad lighter. I'm actually going to keep luster. I don't reach for it a whole ton, but when I want like a very light pink, very smooth formula highlighter, I will reach for luster. So luster is staying for now. Next up we have my two afterglow highlighters here from Urban Decay, and I already know definitely one of them is gonna go. And this 
is the one that's going to stay. This is the shade Sin, which is a pretty basic, like, beige gold highlighter. First of all, Urban Decay just always kills it with the packaging. I absolutely love this. I actually use Sin quite often. Well, not quite often, but often enough to justify keeping it. It is a pretty basic, very light gold champagne shade, but it looks very flattering on my skin and I always feel like it lifts my cheeks and it looks really nice. What I'm definitely not going to keep though is the shade Fireball. I ordered Fireball because I was sure it's going to be my favorite of the two, because theoretically it is a peachy pink copper sort of shade. But it is just, the, the formula is so disappointing, there's like no sheen to it, it's so subtle, I just never quite enjoyed using this highlighter, so Fireball is definitely gonna go. Okay, next up we have the only Nabla highlighter that I have from the line of these like more circular pan highlighters, I'm not sure how they're called, the shade and glow, this one is in the shade Obsexed. This is a tough one because I only purchased this earlier this year, so it's quite new to my collection. And I do actually like the shade, you guys. I do actually like the shade. It is quite subtle, so it is not the, the most like out there highlighter, but I do love those like gold, peachy copper tones, and oh, I do like this. I'm definitely gonna keep it for now. And it's also new in my collection. No, this is Tank. My only Laura Geller highlighter. This is her Gelato Swirl formula, and this is the shade Peach Glow. Um... What can I say about this highlighter? It's okay. It's nothing that blows my socks off. Doesn't lean enough orange for me. Uh, but that being said, because it is my only Laura Geller highlighter and I'm unsure at this point whether I want to part with it, I'm gonna keep it for now. Then we have the only highlighter that I have from Ofra in my collection. This is the shade Blissful. I am actually going to keep this highlighter because I do very much like the Ofra formula. I don't really have any of their other highlighters and this is not the most exciting color in the world but it is a very nice formula it looks really beautiful glowy and like intense on the skin I don't know whether it's coming across on camera some of these highlighters just look so much like my skin tone that it's very hard to say how they look like but I do really like the formula of these Ofra highlighters I'm not going to buy more just because Ofra is not one of those brands that really excites me but I do like to own a little something from them so I'm going to keep blissful and last but not least, we have the only Colourpop highlighter that I have kept from their like Super Shock Cheek highlighters. This is the shade Highly Wasted. Not to anyone's surprise, Highly Wasted is one of those like coppery pink gold shades. And I do very much like this highlighter, so this is not going anywhere, first of all, because clearly it's my kind of highlighter. And second of all, because it, again it was a present from a friend who sent it to me as a gift a while back, so I'm definitely keeping this highlighter from Colourpop. Alright you guys, so this is what I'm getting rid of. It's not that much, all things considered, but I'm pretty happy that I'm getting rid of these highlighters because they were really not being used for a very long time and I think it was really time for them to go. So I'm pretty happy with how this declutter went. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye!